Hey guys, it's Lix. So recently, I've been noticing a trend on Instagram that's been really taking off in the artist community. And if you haven't guessed it already, yes, it's the Draw This In Your Style Challenge. It's basically exactly what it sounds like, where an artist will usually draw an original piece and invite others to try and recreate it in their own style. I've actually done a few of these myself already, but I thought that it'd be cool to do another one and share my process along the way. So let's get started with step one, finding an illustration. When I look for an illustration to redraw, I've learned that it's much more fun if I choose one with a less similar style to my own. Because the style is more different than mine, it really gives an opportunity for my own style to shine through, so the finished products have more contrast in style. For today's drawing, I went with this beautiful illustration by, so sorry I'm gonna butcher your name, but um, by an artist called Fai Hai Kuntum on Instagram. Their aesthetic really spoke to me, so this is the one I'll be basing my drawing after. So next comes the initial brainstorm slash thumbnailing process. And this is where my first tip comes in. If you're about to create a more complex drawing but isn't sure how to start or tackle it, do some thumbnailing. Thumbnails help you focus on the overall look of the drawing and keeps you from adding too many details. You can also make multiple thumbnails with different compositions and who knows, maybe an idea you wouldn't have considered will end up working beyond your expectations. To make the thumbnails or rough sketches in general, my advice is to use a brush with a lower opacity. This will help your lines look less rigid and give emphasis where a lot of them overlap. My second tip is also related to prepping for the illustration, and that is to do some color testing. Try using different color combinations and palettes beneath your thumbnails. Something I find useful is using the layer modes of your drawing program to overlay the thumbnail with a desaturated purple or blue because it helps the whole piece look a lot more cohesive in my opinion. Creating the line art is easily the least enjoyable thing when it comes to entire drawing process for me. And for this drawing, I expanded my thumbnail color sketch to use as my base so I could save some time. But another thing that helps me greatly is my third tip. Control T or transformation. You know when you can't give a specific line that exact curvature you want? Well, draw that line to the best of your abilities on a separate layer. Then you can use transformation to make corrections. When you are in transformation mode on Paint Tool Psy, you can actually hold down Control to change the perspective of the lines. Although, do know that depending on how you use it, the line quality might suffer and be less crisp. Another tip related to line art is the color. Unless you're going for a very stylized, sharp, cartoony look, I would advise against using black as your line art color. Experiment with variations of browns slash dark orangey reds for a softer look. And if the line art is too light, you can always set the line art layer to multiply, which changes the color depending on what's underneath. Also, if you're still having trouble with getting the line art to blend well, one thing you can do is to color it. For this, lock your finished line art layer and color accordingly. For example, using a dark brown or black for the eyelashes and a less saturated orange for lines around the skin. So because the line art process is so tedious, I'm actually going to fast forward through this portion and skip to our next step, which is base colors. To start, I first create a base by selecting everything outside of the line art and then inverting that selection to bucket in my color of choice. Then, I make a folder clipped to that base and make layers in the folder for each section of the drawing. Hair, jacket, eyes, etc. It's convenient to have different parts of the drawing on separate layers because that way you can always adjust the tone of that part by itself. And using a folder to contain all the layers is useful too because that way you can clip even more layers onto the separate parts of the drawings. Yay for layers! And if this was very confusing and made little to no sense, don't worry, I'll link some tutorials that explain the mechanics better in the description down below. Now we're finally at my favorite part of the process, coloring. For this piece, because I went with a line art and sharper look, I will be doing my version of the cell shading technique. For those who don't know, cell shading is basically using a handful of colors without having transition tones or excessive blending. Most animes and 2D's cartoons use this method of shading. For me, when I want a cleaner final product, this is the route that I take. 
Although I mention cell shading as the main method, I do add hints of the painting aesthetic into the mix. My coloring process for the style usually consists of these few steps. First, I airbrush a soft gradient onto the base color. The color used and placement depends on what section you are trying to shade. For example, I always airbrush reddish tones to the cheek to act as blush before I put down any harsh shadows on the face. Then, I might use a large brush with low opacity to lightly indicate where some large shadows might fall. And finally, I go in with a multiply layer clipped to the base for all of the little shadows. This step is basically cell shading as most would call it. And here is my final tip. Less is sometimes more. When cell shading, be attentive of where and how the shadows are placed. Often, simple shapes is enough to indicate form to the viewer. Too much detail can overwhelm the eye, so know where the focus is and distribute the details accordingly. I think that's all I have to say about the coloring process. I'm sorry it's not very in-depth, but this was meant to be a brief explanation of my process. There is a lot more to this than the steps I've outlined, not to mention the amount of time and practice it took to get to a level where I kind of know what I'm doing. But yeah, if you guys are interested in more information on any particular step, I'd be happy to add it to my future video list. Speaking of which, I've been wondering if you guys would like to see more traditional or digital stuff from me. I'll leave a poll in the card around right now, and I've been wanting to use this poll option on YouTube for ages now, so feel free to cast your vote and let me know how you think. Also, future video suggestions are always welcome in the comments below, so feel free to comment that as well. And sorry for the long tangent, but I think I've stalled long enough that we are getting to our last step. So unfortunately, I don't have any footage for this step, but basically, I added in the roses, leaves, and a minimalistic background. I also used Clip Studio Paint's default effect brushes for some well-needed sparkles. And that's about it. Thank you so much for watching till the end, and consider leaving me some feedback, be it likes or a comment. I hope you enjoyed this video, and I'll see you in my next one.